Good morning, good morning. How is everybody? How are you guys all doing? It's been it's been a hot minute. Welcome back to Planet Zoo. Uh, my schedule has been more than crazy the past few weeks and we've missed we've missed a couple Sunday streams, haven't we? <laughs> it's been it's been a couple weeks, but I'm happy to have you guys all here. Hello, Sock, who's cutting the onions? Zoe, DJ Pack, Heather and Silver Fox, of course. Thank you to my wonderful mods for being here as always. I love your zoos, Jacob White, I love foxes, Tom, good morning, Durante, good morning, Mr. T Builds, you guys are all here, happy to see it, Shells Bells, Benjamin's here, going all the way back here, George, uh, <laughs> Koki, Destiny, everybody that was here early, Sleepy Doodle, Thanks for hanging out. We're back in River Rock Zoo, I figured we'd continue our, uh, our snow leopard habitat here. Uh, Melissa, first timer here. Well, welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed the stream. What are you guys all up to this Sunday morning? Uh, I am, I am very much still waking up, so we'll see how this one goes, but <laughs> it's been, it's been one heck of a week, let me tell you. Uh, for those of you that don't know or don't follow me on my other social medias, I went to Disneyland last weekend. Um, well, Sunday and Monday, and so I, it's kind of thrown off my whole week, because <laughs> my weekends are for video gaming and content creation, and I spent, I spent the weekend at Disneyland, so I was behind. <laughs> Very behind. Good morning, Destiny. Hi, Primal. Coffee making time. That's right, Melissa. I already have my coffee. Have it with me. I'm gonna hopefully make me wake up just a little bit, just enough to be coherent. <laughs> Disneyland! That's right, Drew. I was so excited. I'll tell you guys all about it. I can't wait to talk about it. It's my first Sunday of spring break. Ooh, that's exciting. I always loved spring break. I always loved any break from school, to be honest. <laughs> 
I liked I liked when there was a break because I'm I I really liked school but I'm not like a I I couldn't sit down and study for hours I couldn't sit in classes for hours like I'm very much a you know do something for a short period of time have a break do something for a short period of time have a break uh, maybe I just have a really short attention span but uh, so that's why I always loved it when when school went out on break is because because I needed it I needed a mental break <clears throat> Just woke up and realized there was a Savannah live. Well, good. Glad you're here. <laughs> I know. I keep saying, you know, we stream every Sunday. I think I said that in a in a past video. And I was like, except for the past two Sundays because life got in the way. So, oops. But hopefully we are, we're back on it consistently now. I actually don't know my work schedule off the top of my head. It keeps changing. Unfortunately, um, we have had some uh, staffing issues. Uh, in the sense of that I don't have any. So my schedule keeps changing um, somewhat last minute uh, between, it's either between staff or the fact that like we run public programs, right? So it's just dependent on what, what our county is allowing us to do with COVID and stuff. And then also what people are comfortable with. Um, some people just aren't comfortable going back out in public yet. And that's totally fine. But um, it plays a big role in, in what I'm able to do, what I'm able to do at work. So like, for example, I said, I think I said last week, I was supposed to work today, um, but one of our programs was really light. And so we only needed one manager to be there, not two. So lucky ducky me, I get to be here instead. <laughs> I am not complaining whatsoever. I, uh, I worked yesterday and I don't normally work the weekends. So I was very excited to have, uh, have Sunday off. Plus that means I can come hang out with you guys. Uh, teacher also in grad school for master's in history. Ooh, I love history, Benjamin. I was deciding between a history major and then what I do now when I was first going to school. Because I do. I really love history. I think it's really, really fascinating. Uh, world history, U.S. history, all of it. I think it's really interesting what we used to do. The last stream I was here was the donation one. Oh, yeah. The one where you guys made me cry. <laughs> Meanies. <laughs> I say that completely jokingly, of course. You guys are not mean for doing that, but... <clears throat> Good morning, Sam. How are you? Uh, is Disneyland or Disney World... Wait, is it Disneyland or Disney World you went to? It depends. Were you in Florida or California? If you're in California, it was Disneyland, or Disneyland Resort, as they're calling it now. Uh, and if you were in Florida, it's Disney World. Or were you in another country? Because that changes things, too. Um, but I went to Disneyland, uh, so in Anaheim, California, uh, is where where I went. I think I'm gonna extend this out so that it so that it meets this, and I don't have to worry about ending the um, railing <laughs> in a creative way. But yeah, I went to Disneyland, and let me tell you, Disney has got its shit together. Like they are on top of it. They were fantastic. Um, all the restrictions that they have in place, you know, I've seen a lot of companies put restrictions in place, right? Because they have to, because the county or the, the state or the, you know, federal law or whatever it is, is telling them they have to. But I've seen companies that are like, yeah, we have to do this, but you know, if people don't listen, it's this, that, or the other. Uh, no, Disney is on top of it. I saw so many people um, that were attempting to, you know, break some of their rules and, and regulations and things. And like immediately a cast member, they seemed to like appear out of nowhere, but they were like, no, don't do that. Put your mask back on, get back in line, stand behind your little, please wait here thing. Like they were, they were totally on it. And I think it's because the County has such, such strict guidelines right now, or I keep saying the County, the state has such strict guidelines right now, um, especially for theme parks opening up, that I'm sure the state said like, look, we're gonna let you open, but you better listen. You better listen to what we're gonna put in place because if you don't, we're gonna shut you right back down again. Um, so they did, they, they listened and it was really, really nice. <clears throat> Glad you made a live. Hi, Adele. Adele is our newest Banana Bunch member. Thank you so much for joining. I got you on our start screen. I hope you saw that. And let me know if you're on our Discord because I haven't gotten a message from you. But if you're on our Discord, then I would love to uh, love to get you your special role over there. 
Um, but yeah, they, they were totally on it. It was, it was so much fun. And what I was telling some people, uh, that I work with is that as a Southern California resident, um, Disneyland is part of my normal. So I've, I've had an annual pass for the last seven years, I think, uh, seven or eight years now. I don't have one anymore because they canceled them, but Disneyland has always been, you know, part of what my normal routine is. You know, we have an afternoon off, we go up to Disney and we hang out and whatnot. So it's been, it's been hard, uh, not being able to go during the pandemic. I mean, the pandemic has been hard for a lot of reasons and, and people that aren't able to go to Disneyland normally, um, might not fully be able to relate, but just thinking about it as something like your normal, like if you always go to the beach, right? And then all of a sudden you're not able to go to the beach anymore. It really impacts your normal daily routine. Um, and that's, that's kind of what happened, uh, with Disneyland. So my long story short, my point being, being able to go, being able to hang out there again, being able to ride the rides and be out in public and, you know, just do something that I haven't been able to do in, a year and a half, I mean, a ridiculous amount of time, uh, has been great. It, it was so like mentally refreshing just to be able to do something different like that. I was so excited, so excited to go. So excited to go. You are on Discord, posted a picture of your cat, Sunny. Is your name the same, Adele, or is it different? But I will 100% get you your role over there because that comes with your your Banana Bunch uh, membership. So I will, I will definitely make sure to get that over to you. You're such a good builder. Thank you, Elaine. Lots of practice, lots of time and practice. And in fact, I'm actually working on a little tutorial right now um, for building tips and tricks. So I hope you guys will like that when it comes out. But uh, it's taken me a while because I have not done, um, I have not done tutorials, so I, I don't quite know what I'm doing. <laughs> uh, can you show us the whole River Rock Zoo at the end? Yeah, sure, at the end. Remind me so that I don't forget, but yeah, sure. Um, but yeah, so anyway, you know, doing something like that, um, uh, getting out of the house, uh, you know, doing something that's, that's part of our normal was so much fun. And, and like I said, they did such a good job. It was, it was so nice. And now, you know, my boyfriend and I are, I'm not technically fully vaccinated yet because it hasn't been two weeks since I got my, my second dose, but, um, we're both vaccinated. So we both felt very comfortable um, going, my boyfriend's had his vaccine as a healthcare worker. He had some of the first vaccines that arrived in the country, um, because his hospital he works at was actually like a storage place for the vaccines when they came. Um, but yeah, so it, they did, uh, um, a lot of adjustments to make sure that it was going to be safe and everything for everyone. So literally everywhere you looked, not joking, every single place you looked, there were markers littered on the ground, just if you needed to go to the bathroom, if you needed to wait for a ride, if you needed food, if you just wanted to stand and stop walking, they had like areas that you had to stand in so that people wouldn't um, like bunch up and, and gather too much, right? And, uh, and it was all very clear. And then, like I said, on top of that, not only did they have all of that, but they had like what felt like four times the amount of cast members that I normally see. Like there were employees everywhere and uh and just monitoring everything making sure that people were following the rules that they were listening so it was it was pretty great it was pretty awesome uh youtube lied to me they didn't notify you oh no they do that to me all the time as much as i watch i mean i pretty much watch everything that drew and estan do and i try to make the lives when i can i never get notifications like YouTube by now should know that those are content creators that I like to watch and content that I like to watch, but no, they decide like, yeah, she probably doesn't care that they're live or she probably doesn't care that they've posted a video. So they're, they're, they're not, they're not the best at that. I will, I will not give them props for being, for being on top of that. Cause they're not. Um, but yeah, so the most exciting thing I want to say, well, we found out two things, uh, well found out one thing really, and then the exciting thing, but, um, unfortunately I wasn't able to get a reservation for Disneyland on both days. So we did California adventure on one day and I like California adventure. Don't get me wrong. It has like the, you know, the big coaster, right? They're screaming California. Now it's the Incredicoaster cause they changed it. Um, 
But I found out or re-solidified in my mind that uh, California Adventure is a half-day park for me. There's just, there's not as many rides. Everything is, is spread out a bit more, um, and Disneyland really is our, our whole day park. So, you know, we spent one day in California Adventure, but some of that was spent at Downtown Disney, just walking around, looking at everything down there, um, because, you know, there wasn't quite as much for us to do uh, in California Adventure. Um, but second of all, we were able to ride the brand new Star Wars ride. And if you guys don't know what that one is, um, it's the, uh oh, I'm going to forget. It's the, it's not Smuggler's Run. It's the, it's the Rebel one. It's the, it's the new one. Oh goodness. What's it called? Now I completely forget what it's called. Anyway, um, yeah, I don't remember what it's called. I'm trying very hard. If you guys know what it's called, let me know. But anyway, the the whole premise, and I'm not going to spoil it for you guys um, because it, you you need to go on it or people that are able to eventually go on it, like it, there's some, some twists and turns in there that I had no idea because I saved myself from spoilers. Um, but anyway, the whole premise is that you're captured by the First Order and they're walking you onto the ship. They put you in this little like holding cell thing. Um, but the cast members are all fantastic in the sense of like, they're essentially actors. Like you go in there, it's kind of like the Haunted Mansion where they act all creepy. Well, the First Order actors act, you know, like they're the First Order, like they're mad at you. They're like walking you, they walk with their hands behind their back and, and put you in this holding cell and, and things like that. And it's, it's really cool. Um, and then you actually get on the ride because the rebels uh, break you out. And that's the whole ride is you're, you're escaping this, this first order ship. Um, but it's, it's a really revolutionary. Yeah. Hey Zeke and how are you? Disneyland talk. Of course I'm going to talk about it. It was like the highlight of my year. <laughs> it was the highlight of 2020 and 2021 for me. Um, but, uh, what was I saying? Oh, it's a trackless dark ride, uh, with some other mechanics in there as well. Uh, I won't, tell you what other ride they pulled some mechanics from because that kind of gives away what sort of I mean it's not really a surprise I just would hate it shocked me and it was like it made the ride so much better so I just don't want to spoil it for anybody um it's not I'm making it sound much bigger than it is but it's just like a little thing that they put in there that uh um that took me by surprise like I said so I don't want to ruin it for anybody um but yeah a trackless dark ride that's all like the carts are like, like the name sounds, it's a trackless dark ride. It doesn't go on a track. It's all computer, um, programmed to, you know, drive around in this indoor dark ride area. And, uh, it's so smooth and like you just, it, yeah, it's so immersive. It's, it's great. And so I was reading about it afterwards and saying that it's, uh, um, like one of the, the leading in the industry, like the newest, the greatest, the, you know, whatever technology that they have. And it definitely seems like that. Definitely seems like that. Do you like my idea of camels and Tali Zoo? Yeah, I actually don't think I've ever built for camels before. I don't really know what's next for Tali Zoo. That's for later this afternoon for me to figure out. <laughs> but, uh, camels is a good idea. My highlight of 2020 and 2021 is getting your dog. Oh, that's a good highlight. What kind of dog did you get, Zoe? Uh, nice to the Drufus. Join us. <laughs> yeah, sometimes he drops by. Sometimes he decides to grace us with his presence. He said he was editing this morning, so we are his, we're his editing background noise. But always happy to be people's background noises. <laughs> There's a lot of people that are my background noises. It sounds very scary to have no track. Yeah, it's, but it's all, it's all indoors. So it's not like you're like on this like platform looking over a ledge or something like that with no track. Um, but you know, you go through and they have like, they look, and I'm sure it's, you know, it's Disney magic, right? They're, they're making the scale look, um, correct when it's really not but you go in and there's like full-sized um ATATs or at ats whatever you want to call them um that you like drive around and you know that you go by screens that are um they're meant to look like windows to space so they have they have all the um spaceships and things flying around outside 
and, uh, you know, the little guns and laser things. And yeah, it just, it was fantastic. It was such a, such a fun ride. I loved it. So what I'm thinking here is I want to be able to like, just give like peaks of the, the snow leopards from this side. Um, so maybe actually I want to do a little platform here. That might be better. That might be better. Uh, hey Savannah, do you support PZ modding? Absolutely. I think what the mods are doing is fantastic. I don't personally play with mods, but it's a personal choice of mine. It has absolutely nothing to do uh, with the fact that I don't like mods or I don't think they should be modding or whatever you might think. Um, some of the stuff Leaf and Lion Rider uh, are doing uh, looks great. I mean, and they're filling a void, right? They're filling... You're filling a void for what, what some people want in the game. And that's, that's great because honestly, when you get right down to it, video games are for the player. They're, they're for you to enjoy. So enjoy them how you want to enjoy them. And that's that. That's, yeah, that's my opinion on that. <laughs> Yuck, you hate coffee. To be fair, uh, the modern gentleman, I would kind of classify myself as not really liking the taste of coffee either but my coffee like right now i'm drinking it it has both hot chocolate and brown sugar in it so can you really call it coffee because it tastes like sugar <laughs> but it has the effects of coffee so you know the caffeine part of it yeah so anyway long story short disneyland was very very fun and um <laughs> yes, you love me now. Good. Glad I gained a fan. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, modding's been a hot topic because, you know, to be honest right now, there's not much else going on with Planet Zoo. We're kind of eagerly awaiting the next DLC or whatever's going to come our way, right? So, um, so they're, they're filling a void. They're, they're doing the community a service and, uh, and they're free and it's not like somebody says, hey, download this or you can't play or, you know, whatever people might do that's stupid, uh, but they're not doing it. And uh, so if you don't want to play with them, don't play with them. I mean, look at what I'm doing. I don't play with mods in Planet Zoo and I have a, a ton of fun because <laughs> I'm, I'm playing the game the way I want to play it. So I'm building a car park at the moment uh, between working on it. Oh, been working on it for two hours. I... I don't like building um, parking lots, car parks. I call them parking lots. Uh, <laughs> I did uh, for Tali Zoo. I'm working on one, but I didn't finish it. Uh, but I get bored with it real quick because it's it's kind of real repetitive, right? Doing all the parking spaces and things like that. Yeah, we gotta hide this. Hide this wooden panel here. You guys, this is gonna be another stream of placing rocks. I hope that's okay. <laughs> I mean, there's not much I can do about it because I actually have to get it done. But um, I know we did the primate enclosure and that was like, that was like almost 90% rocks. And then here we are, more rocks. More rocks. We need a more rock emoji, don't we? Have you seen the Fennec Fox mod? Might change your mind. I have seen the Fennec Fox mod um, because I watch all of Drew's, you know, showcases and um, and I do watch, you know, Leaf and, uh, uh, Lion Riders content when I'm able to. So I have seen what they're doing, which is why I know that they look fantastic. Uh, is cause I've, I've seen, I've seen what they're making, but yeah, I just, I just prefer, I prefer to play uh, Planet Zoo without mods. But like I said, I'm, I'm never against, uh, against mods. I play, um, I play The Sims 4 with, with a couple mods. However, I don't, I don't play Sims 4 with custom content. The mods that I play with Sims 4, um, are mods that adjust, uh, some like controls and things, just little quality of life things that make content creation a little bit easier. So like, for example, I play with the, the free camera in build mode mod, whatever it's called. That way I can go into the, the tab, tab camera and zoom around and take pretty screenshots without putting a sim in there because playing with the sims in the house is annoying when you're trying to take pictures and things because it causes weather and ugh, have to deal with that so <laughs> so I play with that mod so that's not a thing um but yeah I just I just don't I don't play with uh don't play with mods in planet zoo 
oh, you've always loved me, but my opinion of coffee. <laughs> yeah. I, I Like I said, I, I like coffee. It wakes me up. But I think, I think my coffee opinion is more about having something to drink in the morning. Cause like during the summer I'll make, uh, I'll make smoothies instead of coffee. And so I think it's just about something to like, it helps me wake up. Um, so I want to have something like in my hand, something to drink. Cause it doesn't have to be warm on cold days. I like it to be warm, but it doesn't have to be warm. Perfect. So then they can go up there, right? Got a little bit more hiding to do from this, this point of view, but we'll get there. Let's go over here. I'm going to make, um, can the keepers go through this arch? I think so, right? <laughs> Shoot, they better be able to. They better be able to. Whoopsies. Put that right there, I think. Is good. Perfect. Yeah. The queen of CC. Oh yeah, Cybris. Yeah, absolutely. And there are um, there are creators making wonderful custom content for Sims 4. Um, and you know, the Sims 4 included included it in in one of their their recent uh, updates. So they they fully endorse obviously the the modding and the the custom content and stuff like that. So that's that's really nice. Uh oh, we're gonna have to pan around inside inside this building because I was dumb and put a roof on it before doing all of this part. <laughs> but that's okay. We'll make it work. We'll make it work. The shark mod, shark, blah, blah, blah. Shark mod looks cool. Sorry, my tongue tripped over itself. <laughs> Not letting me talk this morning. Uh, yeah, it does. It looks really cool. It looks really cool. Like I said, a lot of what they're doing is really cool. And they're adding a lot of animals that people have wanted in the game for a while. So... I made caramel iced coffee yesterday. It was great. That sounds really good. Caramel's one of my favorite, like, flavors. Um, I, I love caramel. Like, caramel, birthday cake, sugar cookie, like, those kind of flavors I, I love. Let's put this out just a little bit. I'll change some of these rock colors to kind of give it a little bit of uh, difference here in a, in a little while. But I do want to add a lot of these tundra rocks just so it doesn't look so fakey. You know, I want it to look, I want it to look a little, little natural. Just a, just a little bit. But the roof looks amazing. Thank you. I do. I like how the roof came out. I just, I just should have done it last. <laughs> cause, uh, cause it's going to get in my way. But you know, been playing Planet Zoo for a year and a half now, right? Came out a year and a half ago in 2019. Whatever, whenever it came out. Uh, River Rock. <laughs> Thanks, Leaf. Thanks for stopping by. How are you doing today? Yeah, River Rock, we are, we're going to be wrapping up somewhat soon. I hate to say it, but this is probably the last brand new enclosure we're going to do. I have a little bit of an idea about what I want to do with it uh, going forward, but I'm going to keep that one close to the chest. And... Uh, and we'll finish up, I promise, I promise, we will not leave River Rock Zoo without finishing the polar bear habitat. Because I know that would be, that would make a lot of people upset. Because <laughs> that one I started like months ago and I just don't like interior, so I've been putting it off. Um, but we'll finish it. Box them up and unbox them. Somebody having problem with animals? Just waiting for that bird DLC. You and me both. George, you and me both, when birds come out, I will be all over that. Absolutely all over that. Because I cannot wait. Cannot wait. And I really, really severely hope that they bring birds. But, you know, doing the math in my head, we got we got the last uh, DLC <clears throat> very late March. So March, April, May, June. So very end of June, probably more like July uh, I think is what we're looking at. Um, so, you know, middle of summer. That's what we got to make it to. That's what we got to make it to. Till the next one. And then who knows what they're going to bring to the table. I don't think anybody really knows exactly what they've got planned. Except for, you know, the data mining stuff. But that could be, it could be the next one. It could be the one after that. Who knows? 
I know we have an idea of what we're getting because I've, I've seen those leaks as well, but don't know for sure until it's here. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, did you see Delady did... Oh, what Delady did with Safari? You mean her Inamazoo? Yeah. Or the boat ride. Because either of those, I think, could technically be considered a, uh, a Safari. But yeah, I did see that. I watch her stuff. I watch a lot. I watch a lot of content. I don't think you guys really understand uh, how much content I watch. <laughs> I, uh, I pretty much always have it on in the background of whatever I'm doing because um, I, I enjoy it. And then, you know, from a, a creator standpoint, I, I keep myself up to date with what other creators are doing um, so that I know what's going on in the community and what people are up to and all that kind of fun stuff. So, yeah, I, uh, I definitely watch her stuff. That's not going to cover what I needed it to cover. Nope, not really. Not really. I need to cover this little bitty roof spot. It needs to go away. There we go. That's better. That is better. Birds of Southeast Quebec Animal Pack. That's a stretch leaf. <laughs> that would be really cool, though. That would be really cool. But yeah, that... I mean, hats off to them if they actually do something and, like like uh blow us out of the water but i wouldn't hold your breath we're definitely getting a frog dlc i've put all my money in the savings account on it Ugh. harry i hope i hope you win i hope you don't lose all your savings account money <laughs> also a frog dlc if they made them like individual animals like making like teeny tiny exhibits that would be a challenge will the next dlc be a north american pack I would love a North American pack, but to be honest, I mean, I'm not picky, you guys. I really am not. Like I, and I've said this time and time again, and it's because of my situation, because I am, I don't consider myself like a hardcore gamer in the sense of like, I, I do generally play like a video game every day, right? But I, I don't have hours and hours to spend playing uh, playing some of these games and so therefore like you know the DLCs come out and I still haven't built for the dole um, I still haven't built for uh, what are the other animals I built for the tapir I built for the clouded well kind of sort of built for the clouded leopard I haven't done a speed build for the clouded leopard but anyway my point being is there's still content for me to explore personally just because I work full time and I, I don't have the time to sit there and, and make a lot of habitats. That is not the case for for some uh, some other content creators. That's not the case for some other players. And they kind of blow through the content really quickly with only, you know, a few animals each time. And and uh, that's that's their specific situation. Mine's just mine's just a little different, so Uh, I hope the next DLC is a farm pack where you could add in farm animals so you have them uh, for people to get bored so you can have them there <laughs> for if people are bored of the original animals. A farm pack would be really cool. What I'm really hoping for, honestly, is I hope that the, uh, the Sims adds some farming. I would absolutely love a farming pack for the Sims. I'm eagerly awaiting um, the Sims is supposed to announce announce some stuff, stuff and things, um, in the coming weeks here. They supposedly are announcing like a summer lineup or something. Um, and so I'm, I'm kind of waiting to see what they have in store, but, um, a farming, uh, we know we're getting a game pack soon and I would love it to be a farming pack. That would be, that would be a lot of fun. Make a little farm, have some farm animals. That would be awesome. Gross. What's gross? A farm pack? Uh, Fane, uh, Dan, uh, XG. Yeah, I actually haven't watched them too much, but I know who you're talking about and I have watched a couple things. Um, a lot of content creators, or if I don't have time to actually watch their content, I do follow a bunch of people on Instagram and Twitter. So I see screenshots of what they're working on and, uh, and Dan makes some really cool looking realistic stuff. Yeah, really talented. Um, let's see. So with this roof, 
I'm going to, I'm gonna have to bring it over. But yeah, that's already gonna go inside there. So question is, is do I just bring it over? No, nah, that's a little bit too much to hide. Too much to hide, it sticks through too much. Farming and generations are my wishes. Those would be awesome, yeah. I uh, I really enjoy playing The Sims. I played I played the other night, and I'm really excited for the country or not the country the uh, courtyard oasis kit. Um, I've got like all sorts of like Spanish style, Moroccan style uh, houses in mind, and so I'm I'm excited to get my hands on that one. Excited to get my hands on that one. Um, let's see. Make sure this lines up. This is gonna be tedious, but it will be worth it. It will make my mind very happy <laughs> to have this all nicely lined up and such. You have spent a hundred hours on the game to be. A, you have to spend a hundred hours on the game to be a true gamer. I don't know. I don't. I don't necessarily know if that's true or not. Because how do you define a true gamer? There's so many different ways to game and so many different games. So that one's a hard one to pinpoint, right? What, how, how would you define that? Uh, do you like Siri Pixel Biologist? She does amazing. Uh, that's actually not one that I've seen. <laughs> Your local weirdo. That's a funny name. Uh, that's actually not a creator that I've seen. So thank you. I will, uh, I'll have to, I'll have to remember to check them out. Oh, real life is gross. Yeah, I can relate to that. As somebody who's having a hell of a time at work right now, I think real life is gross. If there was ever a time where I just wanted to be a full-time content creator, despite the fact that I spent so much time going to school to work with animals and do what I want to do, uh, that would be now. <laughs> that would be now, because right now the world, the world is still really annoying. It's still very, very much a pain in the butt. Especially for what I do. Um, but, you know, we just gotta stick it out. Hopefully it'll be hopefully it'll be done soon. I know I'm not the only one. Go ahead and bring this all the way through, because we can block that. Let's see... Yeah, we'll do this one. Like a so. You're back! Welcome back. Welcome back. A true gamer wastes their whole life on games. But is it wasting? If they're a true gamer and they like it, and they're having fun with it, right? That's their hobby. Is that a waste? I'm only trying to be argumentative for argumentative sake. I hope you realize. <laughs> Playing devil's advocate is something that I, I quite enjoy doing. Um, but no, really, like if, if, if true gamers, uh, I guess if true if true gamers, the definition is that they they play video games and nothing else, then then I'm not a true gamer. I don't spend my whole life playing video games. I work with animals. I do, Zoe. I do. I work with animals. The human kind and the fun kind. I own a pet care company and love it so much, but I agree life is ew and work is crazy at the moment. Yeah, the animals don't make it crazy. The animals make my job. <laughs> the animals make my day every day. Um, it's it's the it's the business side of it because you know I work with animals, but I'm I'm a manager, and so you know with that comes managerial duties, and those are not fun all the time. They're not fun all the time. In fact, they're not fun most of the time right now, which is why, <laughs> which is why uh, work is is kind of such a grind. You know, it's something that I just I got to do. I got to live. Um, but I'm sure it'll get better eventually. It's just the current state of the world. So, and I, I know for a fact I'm not the only one. So, if you're right there with me, I uh, I'm suffering right alongside you. Right alongside ya. To be honest, I just want an ocean DLC, a farm pack, and a farm pack so I can make a glass walkthrough with protection with ocean animals swimming around. That would be really cool. The um, uh, SeaWorld here has a shark exhibit that has, um, that has like a, like a people mover, right? And you get on it and, uh, and it takes you through this tunnel with the animals. Yeah, really cool. 
I haven't been to SeaWorld in a while either. I haven't been to SeaWorld since, um, since before the pandemic. People are the worst part of every job. Yeah, you know, it's just, it's just the public, you know, they can be hard to work with sometimes. Because you get, you get all walks of life, you know, you get all sorts of opinions, everybody's got a different way of doing things, everybody's got a different thing going on in their life that, that uh, affects their decisions, and, you know, it just, it takes, it takes a special mentality to deal with that, because you have to put aside whatever you're currently, like, feeling and dealing with if you're having a bad day, and you have to, you have to remember that, like, I don't know, that, like, a lot of people aren't being difficult because because they're like, well, I'm going to walk up and make this other person's life difficult. They're being difficult because they're in a bad mood. They didn't sleep last night. They're financially having problems, you know, a family member passed away, whatever it is, you know, a whole slew of things. But they're they're upset because uh, because they've got something else going on in their life. <clears throat> Um, it, it does. It takes a, it takes a very special special personality to work with with people a lot because you have to be very empathetic and not my strong suit. Empathy, empathy for for people I care about, family, friends, things like that, right up there. Empathy for for people that are strangers is something I struggle with, or I guess people that I'm dealing with. I don't know if I'm phrasing that right. I kind of know what I'm talking about. <laughs> kind of. I don't really like these here. I like it better as a flat, flat rock. It'll look better when we add plants. Always remember that. Always better with plants. So it's okay, Savannah. It's all right to hate it right now. <laughs> Once we add plants, you won't hate it. <sighs> I hate that about myself. I hate everything I do until I add plants. Uh, do they still have orcas at SeaWorld? They do, but they're not breeding them anymore. And they're not bringing in any new ones. So they're currently caring for the ones that they have. Yeah, I have a, I have a couple friends uh, that work at SeaWorld. Uh, a couple friends that are trainers. Tra trainers. Wow. Trainers. Uh, not with the orcas. They're not, they're not orca trainers. Um, but I have a couple friends that are, that work at SeaWorld. Uh, my university lecturer always told us the public are stupid when talking about issues in society. And I live by that statement. Yeah, but you know, I don't disagree with you. Um, education is a huge factor in how people make their decisions, what they do in life, right? So like, and you only, you only know what you know in a sense. And so... Like, for example, so the thing that comes to mind is, like, I get comments because I talk about animals a lot in my videos, right? Because I, I love animals and I love to educate people on animals. And science, you know, even though it should be something that's, like, it's science, we know it. It's not true. Things, topics that I talk about, like conservation, we are always learning something new. But there's always a bunch of different ways to, to think about something, there's different theories, there's new research coming out every single day. So I get comments sometimes saying like, you know, um, what you said isn't true, this, that, and the other. And instead of, whereas sometimes, sometimes they're not said in the best way, right? Sometimes they're said, they're said very blunt. Sometimes they're said, you know, kind of, sort of, um, like matter of fact, I guess. I don't want to say rude because I've not, I've not really had any rude comments. Um, but to me, that's just an open, open conversation. It's, it's not a reason, you know, you shouldn't make somebody feel stupid. You shouldn't make somebody feel, um, like attacked back. Right. Um, so I get those comments and it's, it's a chance for a discussion. So I'll answer them honestly. Like, you know, I, I know what study you're talking about. This is actually an old study or, or that's interesting. I didn't actually know that study. I'm going to go look up, uh, go look into it, things like that. So yeah, but educating people, helping them understand is, uh, is really important when it comes to topics like that. That's what makes, what makes conservation so difficult. Well, I got off on a little tangent there. Sorry guys. I really like conservation, so it's something I'm, I'm kind of passionate about. Be right back. 
We'll see you in a minute. See you in a minute. I hate it when your guests complain it's cold when they come into the middle of snowing without a coat. Yeah. That's your own poor planning. <laughs> that reminds me of a story. Um, Matt will never let me forget it either. It's... <sighs> It's, it's funny, but it's also annoying. So I'm a terrible packer in the sense of like when we go on a vacation, nine times out of 10, I forget something. Matt is a wonderful packer. He just like, he like mentally does checklists. He's, he's like on it. He knows what we need. He rarely ever forgets things. So, you know, perfect match because he always just grabs whatever I forget. However, if anybody's been to San Francisco, you know, what's San Francisco known for? It's known for being kind of cold and kind of windy. Um, my stupid self went on a, a vacation to San Francisco and didn't bring a jacket. I didn't bring one single jacket. So we had to spend a couple hours one day uh, shopping for a jacket. And it was weird because we went to like Target and Walmart and stuff. No jackets. Not a single jacket to be found. And I didn't understand. Uh, anyway, so long story short, we did end up finding me a jacket. But yeah, I, dumb dummy that I am, didn't bring a jacket. Sorry, I'm going to change the song real quick. Um, rude comments are my favorite. It's like, I'm such a calm guy in my videos. Why all the hate? Yeah, you know, and to be honest, the way that I look at them, um, and this... I, this is kind of going to get off topic a little bit is, is I don't understand the reason for them either. Right. I, I don't think, I don't think you should come on to anybody's content with a negative comment. Um, or unless it's constructive, you know, if somebody says like, you know, I really don't like the way you did that. What if you did it this way? You know, there's always a way to give feedback constructively. Uh, that's not rude. Um, but I also think, oh, this is my approach. Let's phrase it this way. My approach and what I try to remember anytime I'm dealing with people, whether it's in person, online, wherever it is, is I can be judged by my reactions. So if you take, if you take my reaction and don't tell somebody what somebody else did. So for example, if I write a comment that says, um, you're so stupid. Why are you being mean? You shouldn't be on the internet, right? But you had no idea what the other person did. Based on my reaction alone, you could say like, wow, that was kind of a rude comment. Why is she being so harsh? So, and that's not to say that certain people don't deserve a little bit of harshness. But in my opinion, there's never a reason to be mean. And by mean, I, I mean you know, name calling. I mean, like insulting. I mean, you know, that kind of thing. There's never a reason to be mean. There's a reason to defend yourself. Sometimes there's a reason to stick up for yourself. I, I'm not saying you shouldn't, you know, defend yourself and stuff like that, but I just try to think about it that way. Like if somebody was going to read my comment, if somebody was going to listen to what I was saying without knowing the other side, how does it come across? And so that's, that's kind of what I try to, try to remember. Um, and I don't know, I, I guess it works. It's just what I do. <laughs> uh, but yeah, just that in life. And so, so just, just trying to spread positivity and, and niceness and all that kind of fun, fluffy, fluffiness. Um... But I mean, that's not to say like yesterday I yelled at somebody in person, in real life, I yelled at somebody because, and I'll tell you the backstory. Um, I take my dogs on runs nearly every day and we have this little canyon area that's next to my house where the power lines go and um, dogs can go off leash, right? And so I was running with my dogs, they were off leash. One of my dogs has a little bit of, of a tendency to get uh, aggressive. And so I went to the very end of the dog park and nobody was around and I was letting him play with my, my other two dogs a little bit. And then somebody came into the dog park, uh, without me noticing the little Canyon area. Cause there's like this other area that you can kind of enter through. And so I didn't notice, which is fine. I tried to call my dog back to me and normally he has a very good recall and he comes back right away, but he wasn't. So I said his name a little bit more sternly. 
And he eventually came back to me, but what made me upset is that the person responded back and she said, oh, it's okay, my dog's just in heat right now. So he was being tempted. And if you don't know anything about dogs and, uh, or, or I don't know, just aren't aware, dogs that are in heat, dogs that aren't fixed, you can do what you want to do. I don't personally agree with it, but you, you can do you. That's totally fine. You shouldn't bring your dogs to a dog park like that because regardless of what your opinions are, regardless of how you feel about spaying and neutering, not spaying, not neutering does something to other dogs. It, it matter of fact, point blank, it is a well-known fact. It causes a reaction from other dogs because they have certain hormones, they give off a different smell, stuff that we can't even sense. That's what it does. And with an already tend to be a aggressive dog or any male dog for that matter, um, can cause a lot of issues. It can cause fights amongst, amongst other dogs if male dogs are trying to fight over her and stuff. Um, so I yelled back at her and I said, actually, no, it's not okay. Your dog shouldn't be at a dog park then. Um, and, you know, I don't consider that to be necessarily mean, but but that's that's matter of fact is you, you shouldn't be bringing your dog to a dog park like that. Anyway, that just happened last night. I don't know what made me think of that. <laughs> Um, when it comes to conservation and the public, you have to answer the question, why should I care if it doesn't affect me? <clears throat> That's very true. That's very true. And, um, I think the, one of the hard things about conservation is people try, people try to go to perfection right away. And what I mean by that is that people try to say, you know what? Plastic is killing the world. Do not use plastic. You know, cold turkey, cut and dry, don't use it. Get rid of it, don't have it in your household. And that's not, that's not sustainable. And it's not sustainable because, because people have a certain lifestyle. There, are, There's culture involved, there's how people live, there's how conveniency, there's money. Are people able to afford to, to not have plastic and buy more expensive? So you have to take you have to take baby steps. You have to then realize that there's a degree of good that you can do and getting people to stop using, you know, one item instead of using all of them is better than coming at them brute force saying, don't use absolutely anything and them going, well, pff, heck no, I can't do that. And then they don't change anything. You know, you, you have to educate and it's a slow change. It's not going to happen overnight. But like I said, if you come at people aggressively like that as, as like brute force, they're going to say, no, I live my life the way I want to live my life. F you, I'm going to do what I want to do. And then that doesn't help anybody. But you're right. Why, if it doesn't affect me, that's a hard one. Ugh, you don't take your dog in heat to the dog park. Yeah. Hey, how's it going? Uh, Joa Kim, I hope you're doing well. Yeah, not at all. And it was some younger, younger girl, but it is hard, you know, because I, I work, I work, um, I do work with dogs. I have three dogs, but I've also worked with dogs and it just, you, you have to remember that they're not people. They're not people and you can't, you got to treat them like they're dogs and scent is a huge thing for dogs and dogs that aren't spayed and neutered give off a different scent and it, it, it is a thing. It's, it doesn't matter if you think they should or shouldn't be neutered. That's totally fine. I mean, I don't agree with you if you don't if you don't think that spaying and neutering is important, but you have to, you know, cater to what your dog is. Like my dog tends to be slightly aggressive. So when I go, he's on a leash. I don't let him off the leash to play free willy with other dogs because I don't trust him because he's not good. He's good with my dogs, which is why I go, there's an area that's kind of like secluded, which is where I was. This person just happened to sneak in, but also why, <clears throat> excuse me, why I've spent time and money and lots of effort training a good recall into my dog, because I also know that when I need him to come back, he needs to come back because if, if situations like that happen, I need to be able to control him and get him out of those situations. And he normally listens very, very well, um, except for apparently when a dog's in heat. 
So, I mean, it was fine. My dog didn't do anything bad. It just, I was surprised that she was so, like, happy and, like, oh, it's okay. No big deal. I was like, well, actually, yeah, it is a, it is a big deal. <clears throat> I'm getting lag, but it's on YouTube's side, though. Ugh, I'm sorry about that. Stupid YouTube. Let's see. Um... Yeah, on my side, everything's fine. I'm so sorry, guys. Try refreshing the page if you're getting a little bit of lag. Hey, Sack. How are you? You're back. Yeah. Darn, YouTube. It might be me. Yeah, I would uh, I would refresh the stream because on, on my side, I'm not getting much, so. Ooh, what if... New plan. What if we did... <laughs> I just got a, a, a idea. What if we did a cave? What if we did a cave over here? So let's raise all this up a bit and then we could have like a little cave viewing. Mm. Like so, I don't really want it to pop above. There we go. But yeah, wow, I feel like we're hitting a lot of like, like serious topics. That was not my intention for today, you guys. Not my intention at all. You work with dogs and wolves? That's really cool. I would love to work with wolves. I'd love to work with big cats, to be honest. Those are my kind of like dream animal. Um, lions are my favorite animal. And so I would love, I would love to work with them. Yeah, see, we could do, we could do a little cave. A little cave, like so. I think that would be good. Uh, I go again, you drop characters or he is buffering. She is buffering. Oh, I'm so sorry. My dog sits on chairs like humans. It's funny you say that. My dog does too. Koa, um, he loves to sit on chairs. And actually, I was just at my parents' house yesterday because <laughs> I took my dogs on a run and my parents live a block away from me. So I stopped uh, in their backyard because my dog that tends to be a little bit aggressive, I, I take him over there so that he can run around with my dogs in like a fenced area and get some of his energy out. And, um, I ended up being there when my mom got home from work. And so she was like, well, do you want me to feed you? She didn't say that. She said, do you want to stay with dinner? <laughs> and, uh, and I said, yes. Yeah. So we were hanging out back there and he, he gets up on all the backyard furniture, all the chairs. He like, he goes over and sits in them. It's so funny. He's a funny dog. Funny doggo. Uh, why do people so much try to save the panda? Other than looks, how important is the panda? The bear is perfectly able to eat meat, but chooses bamboo. Yeah, all the animals are important. So I, I would I would argue that there needs to be efforts to protect any animal. Um, because, you know, it... it yeah, any animal is important. I'll just I'll just kind of say that. There, uh, conservation is such a long-winded, um, long-winded topic. So many different avenues and things to to talk about, and uh, you know, highly controversial, obviously, because that's what we're dealing with in the world right now. Do you recommend the San Diego Safari Park? Um, I have a trip planned for June and want to make sure we hit everything. Absolutely. Um, so the, <laughs> I call it the wild animal park because that's what it used to be before they rebranded it to the safari park. Um, but yeah, absolutely. The, the zoo and the safari park are great, uh, great for uh, vacations for, you know, if you want to go to a zoo. Um, the safari park is a bit more spread out and much more like really open habitats and unobstructed views. Uh, be prepared to walk a lot, a lot, um, but definitely, definitely recommend it. It is, it's an awesome, awesome place to go. You've refreshed six times. I'm so sorry. I don't, I don't know what to, what to tell you. Like I said, my... My recording software here and everything is showing showing 60 FPS for me, so um, I don't I don't necessarily have an answer for you. Um, let's see. Hold on one sec, guys. Let me look and see if I can I can do something about it. Let's see. 
Um, yeah, I'm sorry guys. YouTube is now telling me that it's poor. Um, but there's not not much I can do about it. Um, yeah, let's give it a minute. Give it a minute here. Yeah, it's it's something on YouTube. And I don't know what their issue is cuz they're they're basically just telling me that that you guys might experience some buffering but not telling me uh what I can do about it. Snow leopard climbing tree. Yeah, absolutely we can add a snow leopard climbing tree. So are you planning on snow so what are you planning on the snow leopards? Just ask uh, if you need some zoo things. Um, yeah, I haven't figured it out yet. Right now we're just focusing on rocks. You're back. Yeah, it's lagging for you right now. I'm so sorry it is lagging. I was just looking at the stream. Um, I, like I said, I, I, don't, I don't have an answer for you guys. I'm so, so sorry because everything is good on my end. Um, my, my software and everything is reading okay, but then YouTube is saying that it's, it's dropping frames and that, that lagging can happen. So I don't, I don't necessarily know what I can do about it right now. Um, I'm kind of just paused for the moment cause I don't want you guys to, to miss some things. So the screen shouldn't be moving right now. Um, there we go. Now it says back to excellent. So hopefully, hopefully the lagging should stop if you haven't already refresh one more time because now YouTube's saying that it's it's figured itself out. So hopefully, yeah, now it's working fine. I'll move the screen a little bit so you guys can can hopefully see. If you refresh now, it's working good. Good. The eighth time was a charm. I'm so sorry, Addison. That is so annoying. Technology things drive me up the wall. So you guys, you're not alone. <laughs> if you get frustrated with that, I I get so frustrated when technology doesn't work like the first or second time. Uh, it's interesting to think about the fact that evolution may be uh, failing some animals we're trying to save. But I think all animals are worth trying to save. Yeah, I think all animals are worth trying to save. And the thing is, is like animals are meant to go extinct. You know, people say like, like we should save all animals from extinction and, you know, try our best. The problem is, is that we're causing extinction at an accelerated rate. Evolution is supposed to happen. Extinction is supposed to happen. There are supposed to be animals that die off because new species replace them. Um, but it, us causing way too much too fast is the problem. Unfortunately, Savannah picked a very popular streaming time. Yeah, it's my fault. <laughs> Blame me. And YouTube, I guess. But it is, it is, it was YouTube. But it looks like it's working now. YouTube says it's working. Uh, do you have it at, have 360 instead of 460 was making mine uh, really good afterwards. What do you mean, on my settings? Um, whoops. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you're back. Do you have don't de purple? I don't know what that is. So no. This reminds me of the snow leopard dome at the wildlife oasis in north of England. Oh, cool. There was a reference picture. All right, let's get going again, and hopefully, hopefully it'll it'll keep itself together. Um, we were using a reference picture um, to get this one started. But it, I think it was like a tropical house, if I remember that right. Where are my favorite little painted beams? These are ones. Uh, 
Am I doing more realistic or just playing? I always try to uh, implement some aspect of realism in a sense to any of the builds, um, but I'm not going for like hyper realistic, if that makes sense. Oh wait, why did I put that in the middle? That is the opposite of what I wanted to do. <laughs> I wanna cover up these. But yeah, always some sort of, of realism in here. So like, um, I do want areas for them to climb, areas for them to go behind and hide. So I'll probably do some sort of feature in here uh, where they can get, get behind it, right? So that they're not in the view. Um, yeah, and so I and I want to make it so they can go up here as well as kind of a hiding thing. Um, and then this is a obviously a little cave here that they can go in. Actually, what if we used what if we used these beams instead? Oh, why are you all the way under the ground? What if we used these beams instead? I actually really, I really like these beams. They're becoming one of my favorite pieces, but they have such a clean look to them. Whoopsies. Such a clean look to them. We'll make them, we'll make them a different color because I don't necessarily like the blue color, but. Um, you're playing devil's advocate, by the way, with, uh, oh, with the conservation stuff. Yeah. Um, I don't know what my name, what to name my zoo, Tropical North American Zoo. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry I can't help you out. I am so bad at zoo names. So bad. It, it takes me forever to, uh, to, to come up with names and things like that. I am, I'm so bad at it. Let's see. Let's put this up like so. Put it over here and there. There we go. Great. Do snow leopards do pools? I, I don't imagine that they like water very much. Um, you know, they, they live, they, they don't live in somewhere that's going to have like swimming pools and stuff. So I don't, I don't imagine that they, they do. Um, they live in the snow, the mountains and whatnot. Um, there's certain animals like the elephant, like I get why, but conservation needs to be better because elephants are a danger to native populations of humans. Um, yeah, they can be a danger to native populations of people uh, because we've we've forced them to uh, to be close to us. We've destroyed a lot of their habitat. Um, so you know, there's there's a another side to almost any argument you can make uh, for any animal, right? But um, or any animal can be a danger to people. But you know, we're in their space is always what I go back to. We're a lot of the times invading into the space that they would have to themselves uh, without us around. And so to get mad at them for then coming back in our space, I don't think is necessarily fair. Like they destroy the entire crops of food, which is bad for humans in the area because elephants uh, can eat. Is that what you mean? Any vegetation humans can't. Yeah, but they're not doing it vindictively. You know, animals are not, are not that way at all. They're not thinking like, I'm going to go destroy this because these people are, are in the way or they're trying to grow crops over here and I just, I don't want them to, you know, they're, they're big animals. They're big animals and they, they move through areas and they do, they destroy things. They're very destructive animals, but that's a part of their natural behavior. Um, so to, to get mad at them for doing what they're naturally are meant to do, I don't think is necessarily fair. Look at how long it took for people to come up with the name. Oh yeah, for me <laughs> to come up with Tully Zoo. Yeah, it was like episode like eight, right? Six, eight, something like that. Uh, I couldn't come up with a with a name to save my life. And then I finally just picked something that was like, oh, this kind of sort of sounds like a name. Let's go with that. So yeah, I am I am terrible, terrible at naming. All right, let's see if we can't make this a cool little step thing that hopefully they can use. Hopefully that they can use and I mean theoretically keepers can use, right? Because we'd want we'd want the keepers to be able to get up here. I don't want the keepers to be able to get up here in game. I don't necessarily care about that, but 
if this was an actual zoo, the keepers would need to get anywhere the cats could. Like... I imagine that the snow leopards have a pretty good traversable area being, you know, cats that they can they can jump and stuff, so. Is that okay, I think? I think, I think. Let's see. I'm just gonna kinda go with it until we get to the ground and then we'll we can adjust from there. Yeah, I think that's okay. And then maybe we do this kind of thing. For like a little bigger landing area. I know I'm covering up a lot of the rock work that we like just did, but I told you I had a new plan. New plan. There we go. Be back in five minutes. We'll see you in five minutes, Heather. The zoo I mentioned about the Snow Leopard Dome uh, has a pond in the exhibit. It's enough to fit in, but not to have a decent swim in. Yeah, like we'll give them water. Um, cause I'm sure they like, you know, they like to drink. I know they like to drink water. That sounds like a stupid statement. Um, <laughs> but they, they like to, uh, have water, you know, to, to go drink in like a little pond or something, but I don't think they're going to be swimming, um, or necessarily need to be swimming. There we go. And then, yeah, hopefully they can get up there. We'll just have to make some sort of fencing cause otherwise then it'll look like they can just like hop right down and uh and uh oh you know what we do need to kind of adjust this though because i just blocked my little entrance for the cave which is not ideal so let's go ahead and adjust this so that it comes this way instead there we go that's better that's better elephants have migratory routes that humans then build over and uh, get crossed when the elephants get too close or destructive. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, e exactly. So, you know, it, it just, it again plays into like, we're, we're doing things that are messing with the environment, right? And, uh, and then getting mad when certain things happen. Um, I th think, I think that's okay. Hopefully they can kind of get through that. Snow leopard. We can actually check the traversable area right now. Our poor little snow leopard. Hold on. There we go. <laughs> kind of buried him in rocks. Uh, traversable, traversable. Let's see. Where can you go? Just there. Really? That is incredibly surprising. The snow leopard can't get off this rock or up onto that one. That's insane. Ugh, that's a pain, actually. Why is it so bad? I thought it would not be as bad. That's, that's disappointing. All right, well, let's see. Is that enough? Because <clears throat> that, that was pretty bad. Okay, there we go. Now we can kind of get all over. We can't get through there. And we can't get up here. I know they can jump too, so maybe they they can traverse these things, but they have to they have to jump. They can't walk. Let's see. Not that way. There we go. Where'd you go? There you are. Oops. Get out of this. Can you? Get up there now. Okay, cool. And then that's just not traversable because I haven't moved the uh, barrier yet. But we do need to kind of adjust this right here. So that they can fit. It's a little bit too skinny. They can't fit through there. Pause that. Most animals aren't smart enough to be petty. <laughs> yeah. Animals, they just, they don't have the ability to be petty. It's just not, it's not what they do. They're, they, they want to survive is what they want to do. And that's, that's kind of, that's how they base their life is survival. But yeah, they are, they are not petty, petty creatures. Um, I need this to go here and then we can go across here. Are we 
shortening like that. Great. And then we can, oh, I almost connected it to that one. No, not that one. We want to go this way and to this right there. So hopefully we'll have to figure out, we'll pr we're probably, we're probably going to have to make something custom for the top of that cave because I want this to be clear and that to be caged and we can't put the barrier up there. That's going to be a pain, but we'll have to do that. Where'd our snow leopard go? There he is. Um, let's see. I've seen a hotel would be amazing to stay there when you go a uh, hotel where looks amazing. Thank you. I'm actually, I'm pretty happy with how it's coming out. I had no idea starting this stream, uh, what we were, what we were going to do. Okay. So they can get in there, but they can't get up here still. <sighs> You're so picky. I had no idea what we were going to be doing for the interior. I had not given it one single thought. <laughs> so I'm, I'm pretty happy with how it's coming out so far uh, with just kind of winging it. You're so picky. I want you to be able to run on all the beautiful rocks that I'm laying down. Okay, there we go. So we can get up there. We can get into there. We can go on to here. Okay, I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. But we're not done yet, so I'm probably going to be placing a whole bunch more rocks and uh, they're probably going to, we're going to need to readjust it at some point, but that's okay. Oh, that's right. I accidentally put, did I accidentally put these in the group? I did, didn't I? Why did I do that? Oh, goodness. Okay, whatever. We'll do this. I'm not going to spend some time trying to get that. Why can't I, I want to be able to change the color of these rocks. Why is it not coming up for me? That's very, oh, because I'm getting some of the tundra rocks in there. I forgot. I forgot. I was like, these are all the same piece. Why is it not letting me change the color? That's why, because I was getting some of those, those uh, tundra rocks. Tundra rocks. Fun fact, 16 meters forward, then four to five meters up is the real jumping distance for snow leopards. Oh, that's really cool. So I definitely am within the realm of what they can do. <laughs> They're just, uh, the game's just having them be picky. Game's just having them be picky because they can definitely jump this. Yeah, no reference photo, Heather. I didn't look at any reference photos for the interior at all. Just reference photos for the uh, for the outside. <laughs> I know, we're, we're winging it. We're like going out on a whim here, just doing whatever we please. It is not the Savannah way. But it's mostly because I was so like behind on getting prepared. Like I almost forgot to schedule the stream. And so I scheduled it like 10 o'clock last night, right before I went to uh, get in bed. I was like, oh no, I never scheduled it. People aren't going to know. <laughs> so, uh, so I had to schedule that real quick. Cool. I like this. And then look, this, this honestly will probably be screenshot angle, something like this. We'll put the little snow leopard right here and then screenshot that angle, something like that. I like it. Look at how many rocks. Goodness. We're not done yet too. More rocks, more rocks more rocks. Hey, Lovro, how are you? Thanks for stopping by the stream. We actually, we have about 45 minutes left. We are making some, some great progress. Very happy with that. Very happy. Hey, Joseph, how are you? Hope you're doing well. Hope everybody is having a very good Sunday. I I'm actually home alone this weekend. Um, Matt is at a cornhole tournament in uh, Vegas. So I am all on my lonesome, which is fine. I'm getting, I'm getting some stuff done, <laughs> but that means I have today scheduled just for video games and content creation. So it's a great Sunday for me. Very excited about it. Hopefully I can stay as productive as I, uh, as I want to be as I imagine myself will be, <laughs> that I don't lose, lose some of my motivation and creativity. I am rather tired. So today is probably going to also be a nap day. I am also going to 
to reward myself with a nap. Why does this look like a tiger habitat as well? Probably because big cats are very similar. That's probably why. Probably why, but yeah, for our snow leopards, it's the first time I'm building for the snow leopards. So um, very happy how it's coming out. But like I said before, this will probably be the last enclosure uh, that I make in River Rock Zoo. And I know that makes a lot of people sad. <laughs> it makes me sad too, but I'm ready to move on to other projects. So I have a couple things um, in mind for what I want to do. And then, uh, and then I'll, I will, I'll retire it. I'll retire it. So let's see here. See, this is why I shouldn't put the roof on first. Cause then I'm, I'm playing this kind of game moving all over the place. Let's see. Do I want, I kind of want this over here. Yeah, there we go. Perfect, like so. I want it to be very natural and pretty. Oh, goodness gracious. There we go. Now I now I can see things. Uh, Vegas, lucky him. Yeah, I know. I was actually supposed to go. Um, I was supposed to meet him after the cornhole tournament and be gone all next week. But... Uh, Disney opened their reservations and I was able to get to get our reservations for Disney and so in terms of taking time off of work I chose Disneyland over Vegas um, which I do not regret whatsoever I am very happy with my choice because <laughs> I, I had so much fun at Disneyland but that does mean I dropped him off at the airport on uh, Friday morning before I went to work. And then he actually comes home tonight, but he's driving home with friends. So he will probably not be home until like midnight or one, depending on how long the tournament goes today. So I'm all by myself. Well, myself, my three dogs, my bird, my cats. <laughs> it doesn't sound alone when I say it like that. Because <laughs> I'm not, I'm not... Not truly alone. I'm never alone with pets in my house. Let's see. I kind of want that one to be there. Um, but if I put that there, are they going to be able to get around it? Is the question. Let's see if we can fit this in here. Kind of like so. I kind of want it so it's like growing up and around the rocks like that is perfect actually actually and I actually really like these uh, these trees I like the color of them kind of picky on the foliage color of things um, but I like that green let's see this tree as well is there a smaller one because I don't I don't want it to stick through the roof and that one's already sticking through the roof which is not a good thing Let's see, that is below the roof, so let's see where we can have that. In fact, actually, if we put this over here, that might look better. Yeah, I like that. Let's go go up here and make sure it's not sticking through any of the glass, because that would not be good. And then we'll get rid of this one. Yeah, I like that better. I like that better. I do a lot of this. I do a lot of coming down here, looking at the, the area, placing trees where I kind of want them to be um, so I can kind of frame frame what I, what I think the enclosure should look like. Um, we'll have to check his traversable area again, of course, because I'm sure that we're messing it all up. Let's go ahead and put some of these little, little guys in places. Mm, like so... Some climbable trees might be nice. Yeah, I want to do like a fallen one too. Um, so if we go back up to this here or this one. Is it this one? Yeah, this one. Um, and kind of make it so it's it's like fallen down. I don't know if they can climb these, but we might be able to hide a, a climbable piece in it so that they think it's it's climbable. Something like that. Yeah, and that gives something like, so again, if you're thinking about screenshot purposes, it gives something for the eye to follow here and kind of leads up to the the area up there. I like it. We need some low, low-lying bushes though. We need some, 
We need some shrubbery. Bring me a shrubbery. <laughs> I'm funny. <laughs> I haven't watched that movie in so long. I'm not going to say the movie. I'm going to let you guys see if you guys uh, know it. You better know it. Somebody in the chat better know it. Uh, what else floats in water? <laughs> Very small rocks. <laughs> Uh, the vid, then it rolls on its back and wiggles because it's a vid. Came from my local zoo. I, what? I don't understand that sentence. The vid. Do I know Paulsley? Yeah, I love Paul. I watch Paul's content all the time. Watch Paul's content all the time. And I've been on his channel a couple times. I joined him for a live stream when he hit, when he hit 30k. I, I think that was the milestone he was celebrating. Yeah, I've known Paul for a while. Um, Paradise Wildlife Park. Uh, I, I, sorry, I must have missed some chatting where you started that conversation because I'm a little lost on what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, are you asking personally or professionally? Yeah, uh, a little of both. I've, I've talked to Paul a handful of times. I mean, I wouldn't say I know him too personally, but we've chatted here and there. He's a great guy. Um, what? See, I don't really, I want something more temperate than this. So I might actually, I know they're, they don't technically, whoops, they don't technically need it, but I'm going to turn on the temperate just to see if I can find a, something a little closer to what I'm looking for. Um, that's not those ferns. <clears throat> Cause I want something that we can use as like low lying ground cover but it has to have a specific color of green to it. It has to go with everything. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Not seeing anything right off the top of my head because these, this isn't going to look like it matches. Yeah, that's not going to look like it matches. Um, what about, I just pulled this one, but that one, I don't like that one either. We might just have to do a lot of rocks. Monty Python and the Holy Grail, you got it. Good. I'm so glad. I don't have to be sad now. <laughs> uh, yeah, I love that movie. I actually haven't watched that in a really long time. Let's see. Is that okay? I guess I guess that one might be okay. It's just, it's really green for what I was kind of wanting to do. That's bamboo. I don't want that necessarily. Hmm. You know what? Let's do, let's do this. Let's, uh, work on the terrain for a second because I think the grass is also throwing me off because I want this to be, I want this to be not so bright. Not so bright. Put this all as grass. Lower this down. Um, hi Erin, how are you? Thanks for stopping by the stream. I hope you're having a really, really good day. Whatever you are up to. Let's put a little bit of this in. There we go. And then we'll put a little bit of rock. We'll lower this down. So it's kind of around the edges of here. Hope you're having a really, really good day. Hi, Tom. Oh, you've already been here. You're the one that said Monty Python. I read, <laughs> I read, uh, I read a hello, but then also your name. <laughs> but hello again. <laughs> Uh, we were talking about the video of the snow leopard that freaks out and wiggles as if they've spotted the camera. Oh, yeah. And there's one, um, there's one of a red panda too, right? That, uh, that, uh, freaks out about a rock or something, right? Such a cute video. <laughs> They're so funny. Animals are so funny. I, uh, that's why I love them so much. They're so, they're so, um, like their personalities. Some animals don't have a personality, but the ones that do are, are very cute. Okay. So that's more like what I want the terrain to look like. And then we are actually going to have to figure out the front here. So let's see if we go, we go into construction. I'm thinking about taking the con Crete. I had to think about how to spell that. The concrete stone is what it actually might be what I wanted to search stone. Um, because I want like the pillar thingies. Where are you? These. Yeah, this is what I want. So let's see. 
oops, that's the wrong one. There we go. Yeah, I want something like this to kind of line line the uh, the guest viewing area. It was a viral vid of the snow leopard like three years ago. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I love funny animal videos. <laughs> like I said, animals are, they're so funny. So funny. Maybe sage bushes or willow bushes. Oh, that's a good idea. Okay, we'll go back to foliage in just a second here, but I want to get this down so we kind of know, um, we know where where the edge of, whoops, where the edge of the ha habitat is going to be. And then because this is sandbox, I probably will make this like a mesh instead of one-way glass. Cause I know the snow leopards get really particular in game, but I really want it to be, to be like a, a metal mesh. Um, because you know, with enough hiding spaces and in reality in zoos, you know, the animals are, are monitored for stress and taken off exhibit every once in a while. Um, to avoid that. So I think, I think it's realistic enough to not, you know, not have one way glass. I actually have never been to a zoo where they have one way glass on the main exhibit. There we go. This, yeah, that looks okay. I'm thinking about covering the ground altogether anyway, but yeah, that's going to be, that's going to be our main viewing thing. So if we take the barrier and I'm going to have to situate this so that it lines up right. Let's go ahead and take that there. We'll take this one to here so that they're all on the joints of the, the pillars here. And is that kind of sort of in the middle? Not even close. <laughs> Not even close. Loving the habitat so far. Thank you so much. Yeah, I am too. I want to get this one done. We finished. Uh, the double primate in Sakura Zoo. I just need to do the voiceover for it and get that video out for you guys. And then I also, um, I have a lot of Disneyland vlog editing to do uh, today. So I haven't even looked at the footage yet. So I'm gonna try to, to at least look at it today and, uh, and kind of get that started. So, but yeah, see, I want it, this is what I want it to look like. So if we take all of this to be a little bit taller because it's a bit short right now and we don't want the snow leopards to be able to jump slash climb out like so. Perfect. Yeah, so you would come in and this is what you would get to look through. I like it. I like it a lot. I got so much done today. I was like focused, man. I, we haven't streamed in a while. So I was, I, you know, in my head, it's like, we, we have to be productive today. I've got to get stuff done. The more I get done during stream, the easier it makes my content creation life. Cause you know, then I don't have to spend time outside of the stream building and, and finishing these things. So I was determined to be productive today. So glad it's worked out. <laughs> Um, Twy Cross Zoo in the UK has one-way glass on their snow leopard. Oh, they do. Oh, okay, cool. I knew that some, some zoos must use it, but I've just never been to one that has. But yeah, I like this. And then what we will do is we will put, we'll put a secondary, um, barrier there so that sneaky little annoying misbehaving guests don't put their grubby little fingers <laughs> grubby little fingers in the enclosure and get them bitten off. So we'll do this. We will, oops, that's not on what I need it to be. Put that up like so. And then I'll actually lower this one down a bit because I just kind of want it to be, yeah, I just kind of want it to be that. But maybe, mm, yeah, that's good. That's good. Great. Did you record San Diego Zoo with selfie cam also? Uh, it was with my GoPro is what I used to vlog. Um, and I actually did put myself in some of the Disneyland footage. I just don't know if I'm going to include it in the video yet. <laughs> uh, but I tried my best to get some POVs of some of the rides. Unfortunately, none of the dark rides uh, I know for a fact, probably none of the dark rides came out, um, because the GoPro is not very good in low light. Um, 
but I tried to get some POV of, of some of the, the outside rides, like, you know, Thunder Mountain, um, Cars in California Adventure, uh, the Incredicoaster in California Adventure. I actually rode that one twice um, just because I like coasters so much. Um, but yeah, so hopefully, hopefully it, it comes out and I can share it with you guys because I had so much fun and I want you guys to be able to kind of enjoy it and, and see what Disneyland was like. Perfect. There we go. Keep people a little bit away. I know, I mean, theoretically they could probably still lean over, but this gives the illusion that people are not allowed, uh, not allowed to stick their little hands onto the, the fence. Is the habit oh the habitat's really coming together glad the ugly stage is over yeah i hate the ugly stage uh and it's such a mental thing that i just need to like you know like get over kind of i i just yeah but i i hate the ugly stage i mean i still think we're not fully in the beautiful stage as of yet but um but we're we're getting there i'm actually thinking what if let's go back to nature i wonder if i can get one of these trees to sit nicely behind these rocks over here. Like if we take this tree and not have angle snap on so it doesn't freak out all over the place. If we have one of these trees and, um, oh, actually, you know what? That kind of looks nice. And it's not even, it's not even uh, going through the glass there. I like that. And then we'll put some ground coverage, make it look like it's actually growing out of um, uh, dirt, not rocks. <laughs> you might have to wait till Savannah's 8K. I don't know, Silver Fox. I might hold off on my face until 10K. Maybe. I don't know. I haven't thought that much about it, to be honest. <laughs> I keep I keep telling myself I'm going to like think about it and figure it out and then putting it off because it's very scary. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, so eventually, eventually I'm, I'm in this little process. You got to give me time to work up to it. It took me, you know, how long to do, uh, to do voice, to, to talk to you guys. So the face, the face thing is a, a different story. So, um, but working up to it, working up to it. It is something I want to bring to the channel, obviously. So you missed a lot, Drew. Yeah, we've been, we've been moving in a groove in here. We got a lot done. Um, and we still got, you know, 25 minutes or so. I'm, I'm having a good time this morning. I hope you guys are having a good time this morning. I, uh, for as tired as I am, I honestly woke up thinking like, Ugh, I have to stream. Like, I'm excited to play video games, but like, my eyes won't open. I'm so tired. <laughs> um, you said Willow, right? Let's see, Willow or Sage, reset. Go away. Willow. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Go away. Everything I just placed down. This is what I was looking for. This kind of thing. Thank you. I don't remember who that was, but this. We want to see your beautiful face. Well, I, I very much appreciate you calling it beautiful before you know what it looks like. <laughs> Eventually, I do. And I feel confident enough to say I promise because it is coming. I've, I've put a lot into work, uh, a lot of work into figuring out the logistics into um, so much time trying to figure out my stupid webcam situation. Um, so I, I feel confident in saying I promise it will happen. You just have to give me some time because I am, I am a perfectionist. So I'm not doing it until like my office is set up to be shown on camera, um, stuff like that. But it will, it will happen. Just still working on it. I just can't give you a timeline as of yet. But we'll see how the footage of Disneyland came out. Yeah, you said Willow and Sage. I think that's the other. Yeah, you knew exactly the look I was going for. 10K. So by the end of 2021, yeah, actually, um, with the growth that we've seen on the channel, 10K should be like August. I'm thinking. I'm hoping if the if if the growth keeps going the way it is, you guys, I can't even tell you how awesome you were uh, last month in the month of April. We had 971 new subscribers. That's how that's how amazing the support was in April. There's 917 uh, new faces around, and that's just like mind blowing. 
So if the growth keeps going the way that it has been, which it's it's slowed down significantly in May, um, and I think that's just overall, you know, a slowdown in in a lot of content and and interest and whatnot. People are going back to work, views are down, all that kind of stuff. But if it keeps going, if it keeps going well, that's what I'm hoping for, kind of middle of summer, end of summer kind of thing. So we'll see. We will see. go <sighs> simply savannah on google found a picture standing near a beach it's probably not me <laughs> it's probably not me sorry to burst your bubble but sorry to burst your bubble but I don't, I don't, actually, I've never Googled Simply Savannah, to be honest. So I don't know what comes up. I'm sure you guys are all going to be Googling it now. So tell me, tell me what happens. <laughs> tell me who you see. Oh, I like these. These are so exactly what I was looking for. Who had this suggestion? Cyrus, or Cyrus, was this you? Did you, who, who said this? Because th these are exactly the plants I was looking for. Like, look at this. I love this. I love this. This is so great. Um, let's add more. <laughs> more, more, more. More plants. More rocks. More foliage. Same thing as plants, but that's okay. We're going to have it kind of peeking out through through some of these rocks here, too. As if they're kind of growing, growing in the cracks. I'm thinking, let's do another one of these here. Just for a little bit of height. Yeah, I like that. These are the ones I used outside in the, uh, in the little planters. You're being overly optimistic. <laughs> That's okay, optimism is great. And a black and white pick. Yeah, I highly doubt, if you're Googling Simply Savannah, I highly doubt it's me because all of my other social medias, like my personal ones, um, are not even not even close to the name of the channel. So I would be very surprised, very surprised if, uh, if Simply Savannah came up with me because I don't have them connected in, in any way, any way, shape or form little bushes up here like so adds a little bit of green up there yes very much yes I'm very excited about this so let's actually because this is a bit plain however I want to do some what is this called enrichment I want to do some enrichment snow leopard voila oh I forgot they can climb do they do they need climbing where do you go He's still sleeping over here. Um, no. Okay, great. They don't absolutely have to have it, which is fine. Um, we may put it, we may put a little bit in there. Maybe, ooh, maybe. Can we take this, actually? Idea. Can we, no, stop it. Can we take this and make it so it's fallen over like so? Will this look cool? Like that? I like that, right? That's pretty cool. <laughs> Can you guys tell I'm like so excited with myself today that I, <laughs> that I'm really liking this habitat? This doesn't it doesn't happen super often that I get like like ideas just kind of flowing out of my head and uh, without using reference pictures and stuff. So I'm I'm excited with how this one's coming out. Okay, back to enrichment. I got distracted. I got distracted by my idea. My idea, idea. Uh, what do we want to put on here? Oh, I did say we were gonna use this. Um, it's rather large what she said uh, maybe not sorry let's go here I like how the foliage looks and I kind of don't want to mess it up um, let's go ahead and put this like right at the beginning or right at the uh, front like so yeah there's that and then this is a scratching post that we 
Oh, actually, you know what we can do? Is this too big for this? Oh, it is too big for this one. I like sinking those into, um, no, go back. I like sinking those into real trees, but that's okay. Um, we'll go ahead and put this box up here so we can hopefully entice them to get up, get up there. And then we can put a food thing over here. Whoops. Right here in the ground or on the rock rather. The Google shows a lady with blonde hair. That's definitely not me because my hair is not blonde. <laughs> yes, ma'am. It was me. Thank you. It was a perfect suggestion. I'm so pleased with it. It was like exactly what I was needing because it was looking so incomplete right before you like put in all, all these little bit little bits of details. First thing I got when I searched Simply Savannah was a YouTube channel. Great, that means I'm doing my job. That means I have optimized my uh, my name. I've, I've uh, what's it called? Brand recognition and all that kind of stuff. So go me. <laughs> Wait, you're telling me your real name's not Simply Savannah? No, my first name's not Simply. It's not, sorry to burst your bubble. I sent you the pics on Instagram. Thank you. I'll take a look at them. Um, I'm going to add just a little bit more of this sage. Can I have it, please? Can I have it? No. Yes. Thank you. Can I have it? There. Like that. And a little bit in the front there. Great. Yeah, I like this log. I wonder if they're probably not climbable, right? Um, Himalayan pine. Let's go back here with the tags. Himalayan pine. I don't, uh, yeah, they're not. But if we take a log, log right here. Let's see. Let's do this. Let's do that and this and then this. That way it's kind of like already aligned. Let's take the longer one. Let's see if we can make this inside this tree. Maybe, just maybe, the snow leopards will climb it. But I don't know. I don't have high hopes, so we'll see. You'll, we'll see. You're really late. Hi, Christian. Thanks so much for stopping by, though. I always appreciate it, regardless of when you stop by. Your name is a lie if you don't look like an open grassland with giraffes and zebras. <laughs> uh, you're going to be very disappointed when I turn on my face cam <laughs> and I'm an actual human. Uh, which is funny you mentioned that too, because when people, <laughs> it happens all the time, obviously, right? Because the savanna is a biome that we build in Planet Zoo. But I'll be watching content um, here. It's about about 15 minutes left. So I'm just going to kind of take a overlook and, and figure out here and there. Um, let me stop my recording real quick. Um, watching content and uh, people will say like, you know, we're building a savanna habitat today or welcome to the savanna area of our zoo. And I'm like, wow. I have an area in so many zoos. <laughs> I'm so famous. But yeah, it's it's because I'm that's the biome. So it is funny to hear my name come up in a lot of content. All right, let's check, you picky pickies. Oh, you can climb this tree. That's cool. Can you climb this? Why? Oh, well, we tried. We tried. All right, I didn't ruin any of their... Uh their traversable area. That's great. They can still kind of get everywhere. Awesome. You guys, I'm so happy with how this habitat is turning out. I'm so happy with it. Like, look at this. This is great. It obviously still has some things for us to hide and do and whatnot. We are not done at all, but I am happy with how this is coming out. Oh, goodness. Uh, don't forget that Tori... Oh, Thank you. Look, see, I know myself. This is why I tell you guys to remind me things because in one ear, out the other, I forget it. So 
Yeah, we have about 10 minutes left. Let's go ahead and take a tour. So this is our snow leopard building that we're working on. For those of you guys that have joined and haven't actually seen the outside of what the heck we're building here. Uh, this is our snow leopard habitat. We got this dome glass thing here. I got to figure out. Some oh, whoops. That's sticking out quite a bit. Goodbye. Uh, this is our snow leopard habitat here, our indoor building, because I wanted to make sure that it was able to be like, you know, kept cool and whatnot. I know we have snow leopards at the San Diego Zoo that live outside in our climate, but regardless, wanted it to be inside because River Rock doesn't have too many indoor habitats. This is our, let's, you know what? No, entrance. We're going to the entrance. All right, so this is the entrance of River Rock Zoo here, pretty much untouched. I started to kind of decorate it for Christmas, which is why this is over here, but then ran out of time slash motivation. Um, but this resembles like one of one of my earliest builds here. Um, so this is River Rock's entrance. And then you come in here and uh, we have timber wolves. I don't have a lot of the animals in here though, because... Uh, my computer was starting to struggle a little bit. To be honest, when I made the tapir and capuchin monkey habitat, um, this building here kills because I made like a completely custom like metal roof here. And this is like 4,000 pieces in and of itself. Um, so anyway, I don't have a lot of the animals in the zoo, but this is timber wolves here. Nice, big, open, natural habitat, little gate door that they can go back over there. Um, then we have reindeer over here with this habitat and have a little, uh, little, um, what is this called? Shelter so that they can hang out in there. And then, uh, saltwater crocodile habitat. Go on in here. Saltwater crocodile habitat. I still really like this one. Not that I dislike any of my old builds, but some of them I can tell like, wow, I've gotten so much better, but this one I still really like. This was my first, I think, kind of attempt at, at a uh, like an interior kind of thing. So really like this one with the whole glass roof and stuff. Yeah, I like that. And then over here, I like this little one, this lemur, lemur island situation. I like that. Not their little indoor. I did a teeny tiny backstage. So this would be where the lemurs would come in. Whoa. Lemurs would come in and be able to go back behind the stage here in their little holding area. Then we have a little food court and I made an implied aviary because I'm so hopeful for birds one day. But this is the little implied aviary that hopefully, hopefully one day we'll be able to put animals in because that would be fantastic. Um, and then we have an implied penguin habitat. I made this one before we actually had penguins. I made it technically for, um, chin strap penguins is what I was, uh, envisioning. So that's what that is. Then we have our massive polar bear enclosure that I still need to do the interior for. I kind of finished, whoa, uh, finished this part of the interior. So you can see like this part is all done and beautiful. Um, got some custom signs and things because this is before we had billboards. So I made all these like by hand. Um, and then you come up here and this is the part. Wow. Look at that view. Polar bears right in front of you. Um, this is where I haven't finished the interior yet. Um, there's a big, you know, staircase here and then where you can look down on the polar bears and then you go down and out. And this brings us over to where we were. Uh, to a gray seal and uh, snow leopard habitat. And then over here are the grizzly bears. So if you go, go in here, more custom signage and things. And then the grizzly bear habitat is out the back here. And we have bison over here in this wonderful habitat. This is one of the, one of the original builds that I did in this zoo. And then we have flamingos because you always need flamingos at the front of the zoo. So that's my flamingo habitat with these little bridges that the keepers walk back and forth on. And then a pronghorn antelope. Yeah, and that's that's pretty much it. So it's not a very big project. Oh, I forgot the doll sheep. <laughs> Whoops. Doll sheep over here. I like this one too. This natural looking habitat. Very pretty. Very pretty. Um... It's not a very big project, but it's a very piece heavy project. Um, and I don't have like the top of the line computer, so it is struggling just a wee bit, just a wee bit. 
Uh, this dude is the one that brought me to your channel. Yeah, it's, it's one that's brought a lot of people to the channel, um, because it was like my first big project. Do I like Planet Zoo or Prehistoric Kingdom? Um, ah, uh, that's not a fair comparison. Planet Zoo is a full-fledged game. It is fully developed and being developed and, you know, is an actual game. Prehistoric Kingdom is only an alpha right now. So I, I don't like one better than the other because it's like comparing apples and oranges. They're, they're not really on the same playing field yet. Um, but yeah, definitely like Silver Fox said, ask again when, when Prehistoric Kingdom is at full release. Seeing what they do with the game and, and uh, seeing where they go with it. So love that iceberg poster. Thank you. I'll eventually get around to putting a lot of that stuff on the workshop. Although now, not really the most important because we have billboards, but... Um, but yeah, as much as billboards are great, I always love the original posters. Thank you. I do too. I think they add a lot of character. Um, sometimes billboards can look out of place because like, and even I do it, I use very realistic, uh, pictures for, uh, for my billboards, but then they can kind of sort of look out of place because they're not within the same style as all the pieces. Let's go look at our snow leopard. I know she's, she's sleeping, but let's go look at her. Um, play. There we go. Look at the fuzzy tail. I love their tails. Love the doll sheep habitat. So nice. Thank you. I wanted that one to not be square. That was my only inspiration for that one is I wanted it to be round. <laughs> I feel like Savannah would say Planet Zoo because I know she loves animals. But yes, PK uh, has scaling, which I feel is a game changer. Yeah, it, you know, it is. And I like it. But I also, I do like dinosaurs as well. So I'll be very excited to see where that game goes. But I do want to see what management and stuff they put into place, right? Because building a habitat is not necessarily um, the only fun that I have in the game. I like like thinking of the animal's welfare and stuff. And obviously dinosaurs aren't, <laughs> I almost said dinosaurs aren't real. Dinosaurs aren't alive anymore. And so we don't keep them in captivity. So like what's what's real for a dinosaur? I kind of want to see what they what they put in place as far as management goes. I know, Destiny, you were. You're one of the OGs. You've been here for a long time. <laughs> hey, Titan, how's it going? We are, we're just about wrapping up, but glad you could, uh, glad you could join us. So cute little fluff, I know she is. Just curled up in a little ball. She's got some scratches on her tail, though. <laughs> the scratches always look, like, so severe, like the animals went through, like, a shredder. Siberian Tiger Conservation Center brought me to your channel. Beautiful build, I must say. The minimalistic modern feel. Oh, yeah, that's the one I did for the Lady Designers contest. Yeah, I liked that one. That one's still a really popular one on the channel, too. By the way, your creations are insanely amazing as usual. Thank you so much. Thank you. You like bananas? Oh, I like oranges. <laughs> <laughs> Are we just naming fruit? I like cherries, to be honest. If you ask me what my favorite fruit is, it's probably a cherry. Hey, Jake. We are, uh, we're just about wrapping up, but glad you could stop by. Yeah, I really like, I really like cherries, but yeah. Oh, she's up now. Now she's going to walk around for us. Walk around for us. Do, do some stuff and things. <laughs> Do some stuff and things. Maybe we'll actually get to see her use some of the habitat. Oh, I got to block that little part in. That's a, that's a little unnecessary cave there. But yeah, I'm thinking, um, actually, let me grab, hold on. Let me grab my phone. Whoa. Let me grab my phone and um, double check my work schedule for next weekend. I'm almost positive I should be back to my normal schedule um, now. So that I don't have to worry about, um, what is today? The 16th? So we should be able to stream next weekend, basically, is my only, my only reason for checking. And yes, I actually have a three-day weekend next weekend. I have Friday, Saturday, and Sunday off. So we will 100% be streaming back to normal schedule. 100%. Wow, that is rather large for that snow leopard. <laughs> <laughs> that little rope toy square thing. Um, but yeah. I like avocados. <laughs> I like avocados too. I cannot wait to get PZ. Um, because you know I build enclosures in another game. Mac user getting a new PC soon. So hopefully I can participate in future contests. That would be amazing, Erin. I hope that you can participate in future contests. That would be awesome. 
<laughs> fruit. I like chocolate. You know, so I have been on a whole side note and only because I'm like really enjoying talking to you guys today. Let's just hang out for a little bit longer. Um, I have been on a mission to kind of get re-motivated, re-back in shape, eat healthier, you know, not to say that I eat like, like crap or anything, but you know, this whole past year has been different for a lot of people and it's been very very sedentary comparative to what my lifestyle was before the pandemic hit. So I have been um, really trying to, to eat better, you know, get back out there, all that kind of stuff. Anyway, long story short, I haven't had like candy or chocolate or sweets in a, in a long time. And even when I was at Disneyland, like I had a churro, but I was very good about not getting like all the candy and all the sweets and all the snacks and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I was craving chocolate like two days ago. And I remember sitting there being like, oh, all I want is a Hershey's bar. I just want like plain, good old fashioned chocolate. Um, and I didn't do it. I held out. Um, but that does, it sounds really good. I like chocolate too. <laughs> I like chocolate a lot. Will the lady do a contest? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if she'll do one. She has done them in the past, but I don't know if she has any more planned, but. Doll Sheep brought you in and I fell in love with your custom signs. That's what inspired me to start making custom signs myself. That's fantastic. I love hearing that. I love hearing that I've inspired you guys to, to build better. And in fact, uh, the um, Planet Zoo build tips video thing that I'm working on right now, I'm taking in a slightly different direction than I think a lot of you guys will, uh, will expect. And I hope I say that uh, and it's going to be a very good thing. Um, I might work on that a little bit today, but I want to, I want to keep inspiring you guys. You know, I, I love animals. I love conservation and I love, um, education. So I really want to be, to be helpful. That's my, that's pretty much my whole goal. So I want to, I want to bring positivity and I want to help. So trying my best. Hello. I do not know how to say your name. <laughs> uh, Thalam Moss Parvo 12. Did I get that right? How are you? I'm so sorry if I mispronounced it. I will fully be the first one to admit that I am atrocious at, at pronouncing names. Yeah, you're a little late. We're technically, we're technically at the end of the stream. We're just kind of hanging out and chatting, watching our snow leopard run around. But, uh, yeah. Did you have the new birthday churro? No, I got an old fashioned churro. So Disney had a lot of things closed. A lot of their um, uh, stands and things were completely closed just to keep people from lining up. Cause you know, normally they have those little stands all throughout the park. They only had them open in areas where there was a uh, sufficient amount of space to line people up so they wouldn't be on top of one another. Um, so a lot of those little stands were closed. So only plain churro, but it was very yummy. I was very excited about it. <laughs> uh, did they end up adding colored water to Planet Zoo? Yes. Yes, they did. They absolutely did. I haven't played with it too much, but yeah, if you click on any body of water, um, here, we can go look. Let's go find a body of water and turn it a funny color. Um, hello. Oh, I'm still in camera mode. <laughs> I was like, why is it not letting me move around? Um, yeah, so if you click on any body of water. Uh, hello. Okay, let's pick one that doesn't have a whole bunch of scenery ar around it. That one does. There we go. <laughs> you have to be able to click on the body of water. It can get a little finicky sometimes. But then, uh, let's see, if you go to this one here, color, and then click on here, you can change it to whatever color you want to. And if we make it like a bright, actually, what happens if we do this? And then you up the transparency. Ooh, that looks creepy as hell. Okay, I don't like that. But yeah, whoa, that almost looks like ice. Huh, anyway, um, yeah, you can change, change the color and then change the opacity. Um, and there was a, I was watching uh, the Dutch lion. He has like a blue color and I don't have the hex color code, but he picked like a darker blue color and then like lowered the opacity and it made it like really, really clear. It was, it was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, so that's what you do is you can change the color. 
Um, I probably won't play Wolf Quest um, Sock. I, I have a few games that I play right now, and uh, I don't have that much time on my hands, so not really looking to add a new game, but um, always appreciate the suggestions. We almost need notebooks to write down all the ideas from videos we watch. I do just that, Heather. I'm not joking. I have, right now on my desk looking at it, I have a... Um, like a spiral bound notebook. I have sticky notes and I have a, like a notepad that just can like tear off these long sheets. Um, and I have them in my office here. I have them in my bedroom and I have them in the living room because if I'm watching something, if I'm just thinking about stuff, if I decide I, I want to try something, I write it down so that I don't forget. So I do just that. I keep them everywhere. I have notebooks everywhere. <laughs> Ugh, it looks like milk, a river of milk. That's kind of gross I guess <laughs> I at least it sounds gross to me there's our girl uh, churros originated in Spain yeah I think you're right you're watching cars one that's a good movie that's a good movie but all right guys well with that I am going to sign off because I'm starving I'm gonna go eat I'm going to go uh, hang out with my doggos for a little bit and then get back to some, some video making, some video game playing, content creation, all that fun stuff. So I really hope you guys enjoyed. Really, really thank you guys for hanging out with me today. I had so much fun. We'll be back next Sunday. We're back on a regular schedule. Um, so next Sunday, 8 a.m. If you guys haven't already, if you're still hanging out, still watching, uh, hitting that subscribe button, hitting that like button severely helps the channel and I very, very much appreciate it. Um, but yeah, until next time, uh, I will, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.